Cellular respiration is a set of catabolic reactions that breaks down carbohydrates and sugars with the purpose of retrieving the ATP stored within them. Its chemical reaction shows glucose and oxygen as inputs and carbon dioxide, water, and ATP energy as outputs. It can be broken down into a four-stage process. The first stage is glycolysis. It is a series of 10 reactions that can be split into three phases. Phase one is made up of reactions one through three. It is called the preparatory phase. When glucose enters a cell, ATP donates a phosphate and it becomes glucose 6-phosphate. ATP then donates another phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate, converting it to fructose 6-phosphate. With the help of the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1, PFK1 for short, fructose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. As we reach reaction 4, we enter phase 2, the cleavage phase. In this phase, the 6-carbon molecule, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, is cleaved or split into two 3-carbon molecules, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and its isomer, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. In reaction 5, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Reactions 6 through 10 make up the final phase, the payoff phase. Each of the following reactions happens in both 3-carbon molecules. NAD plus enters the cell with a phosphate. NAD plus then picks up a proton and two electrons, which cancels out the charge, leaving it as NADH plus H plus. ADP takes a phosphate from one 3-carbon molecule, turning it into ATP. This step is repeated. Two pyruvate molecules, four ATP, two NADH are produced. Two ATP remain in the cell to be used during glycolysis. The next stage of cellular respiration is acetyl-CoA synthesis. Pyruvate must be broken down to release its potential energy. Here is a short clip to explain the process. The next stage of cellular respiration involves the movement of pyruvate into the mitochondria, where it undergoes oxidation. Each pyruvate molecule is converted into a compound called acetyl-CoA. In the process of pyruvate oxidation, electrons are transferred to NAD, producing NADH, and a carbon is lost, forming carbon dioxide. The next stage in cellular respiration is a citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle. This takes place in the mitochondrial matrix and is made up of eight reactions. It is called a cycle because the starting molecule regenerates at the end. To start the cycle, acetyl-CoA binds with oxaloacetate to form citrate. H2O is released in the process. In reactions three and four, the energy released in oxidation of carbon molecules is transferred to power the reduction of NAD plus to NADH. Carbon dioxide is released as carbon is oxidized. In reaction five, ADP is converted to ATP with the use of substrate level phosphorylation. A different type of electron carrier, FAD, is reduced to FADH2 in reaction six. A final NAD plus molecule is reduced to NADH in reaction eight. The cycle finishes with the formation of oxaloacetate that will be used to start the next cycle. With two acetyl-CoA molecules, the citric acid cycle produces two molecules of ATP, six molecules of NADH, and two molecules of FADH2. The final step in cellular respiration is the electron transport chain. Here's a short clip to explain. The electron transport chain is a series of membrane-bound carriers in the mitochondria that pass electrons from one to another. As the electrons are transferred between the membrane proteins, the cell is able to capture energy and use it to produce ATP molecules. Proteins in the chain pump hydrogen ions across a membrane. When the hydrogen ions flow back across the membrane through an ATP synthase complex, ATP is synthesized by the enzyme ATP synthase. Oxygen acts as the terminal electron acceptor. By accepting electrons, oxygen is reduced to form water, a byproduct of the electron transport chain. To be more specific, electrons must be transported between four complexes. Coenzyme Q accepts electrons from complexes one and two. 
it is then reduced to CoQH2, and it transfers electrons to complex 3. Complex 3 transfers the electrons to cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is reduced when it accepts an electron and it diffuses in the membrane and interacts with complex 4. With the transfer of electrons in complex 1, 3, and 4, energy is released to help pump out protons. The protons in the intermembrane space create an electrochemical gradient. ATP synthase converts the energy of the electrochemical gradient into ATP using rotational energy. Electron transport chain yields roughly 28 ATP per glucose molecule. On average, 32 to 36 ATP molecules are produced per glucose molecules during the process of cellular respiration. The goal of cellular respiration is to take the energy from food that we eat and make ATP that our bodies can use. Plants provide us with food to eat and oxygen to breathe. They perform this amazing feat by the process of photosynthesis. Let's take a closer look. Photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide, which diffuses into the leaf through small pores and then enters the cells. Inside the cell, carbon dioxide diffuses into the chloroplasts, where photosynthesis takes place. Chloroplasts use energy from light to transform carbon dioxide and water into sugar and oxygen. Photosynthesis is a set of redox reactions in which CO2 is reduced to form high-energy glucose molecules. It is a process that is opposite to that of cellular respiration. During the reactions, electrons are passed from one complex to another, making a photosynthetic electron transport chain. In the chemical formula, the inputs are shown as carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight, and it yields products of oxygen and glucose. Photosynthesis can be split into two simultaneous reactions, light and dark. The light reaction takes place in the thylakoid. These reactions are the photo part of photosynthesis, where light energy is converted into chemical energy. There are two photosystems that act as a hub for energy absorption. After splitting water molecules, electrons travel through photosystem 2, where light energy is focused to re-excite the electrons in order for them to do work. In the process of splitting water, oxygen is given off as a byproduct. Following the split of water molecules, protons are pumped into the thylakoid membrane through the cytochrome B6F complex to help create an electrochemical gradient. The protons in the electrical chemical gradient look to flow to an area of low concentration. And with the help of ATP synthase, the energized protons are used to convert ADP to ATP. Using cyclic electron transport, electrons are sent to photosystem 1 to be recharged and the energy is used to reduce NADP plus to NADPH with the addition of two electrons and one proton, giving it a neutral charge. The final product of the light reactions are NADPH and ATP. Now on to the dark reaction. The dark reaction is also known as the Calvin cycle, named after Melvin Calvin. The Calvin cycle takes place outside the thylakoids in the stroma, the thick fluid of the chloroplast. At the beginning of the cycle, carbon dioxide molecules combine with molecules called RUBP. The resulting molecules go through a series of reactions powered by ATP and NADPH from the light reactions. Sugar molecules known as G3Ps are produced. Most of the G3Ps are rearranged back into RUBPs that will begin the Calvin cycle again. For every six triose phosphates formed, only one leaves the Calvin cycle. Photorespiration occurs when oxygen is brought in by Rubisco to oxygenate RUBP. When this occurs, the energy created in the first step of photosynthesis is wasted. Oxygen must be released so it pairs with carbon and is released as carbon dioxide. With the use of the sun's energy, as well as H2O and CO2, plants act as glucose factories. The final products of photosynthesis are oxygen and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is a high-energy carbohydrate molecule that can be converted into glucose and other forms of sugar. 
Photosynthetic organisms are the primary producers of glucose and oxygen in the environment.